So this is my thesis show, and I'm, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the motivations that, um, that kind of helped me along to make these paintings. Uh, they're, they're kind of out of a love for space, for wanting to make uh, an illusion, but also to uh, make that illusion out of uh, kind of graphic tensions, out of what, how we understand color to recede uh, and to move forward. So I want it to be a space that you could feel like you could walk into, but at the same time encounter uh, intense colors that are really out of uh, our century um, while existing in a, an image that's a few hundred years old. Uh, I came from a background of doing landscape paintings that uh, took months to make, that I would go out um, on site and just paint from observation. And these paintings were a little more, they're a little more intuitive, a little more uh, difficult uh, to understand right at first, but at the same time, uh, they really they're in a much uh, smaller happened in a much smaller amount of time. Um, so they were they were about mixing in observation, mixing in uh, photography and digital collage uh, to, to really kind of build these spaces. Uh, I think they're a little. They're kind of meta paintings. Uh, they're, um, when I think about what the act of painting is, uh, painting as um, making something appear that uh, didn't previously exist on that surface, uh, I think of that as like inventing something. Um, so these paintings uh, thematically, um, you know, I, I feel like the, the people in my paintings, as they encounter new technology or in the process of making it, um, I'm working alongside of them, and I'm inventing something myself. Uh, so I would say that, like just invention, um, is a, a big part of it. Uh, so my show title, Invention Discovery, uh, the discovery part of it is the, the locations that the people in my paintings come across. Um, they travel through a subterranean uh, network of caves that I call a rhizome and uh, they, they find new places that are both um, beautiful and apocalyptic, and uh, they're, they're, they're encountering something new that um, I would say that changes them, and uh, when I make these paintings, it, it changes me and what I think about space. So uh, that is, uh, the show title is really kind of like this, a larger uh, image. Um, that it, it's about the people in my paintings, but also about my process. It's both narrative and uh, conceptually tied together. So in the cavern painting behind me, um, uh, I think it, it kind of came from this uh, childhood fascination with rocks and crystals and uh, finding something that was underneath the surface of our everyday lives. Um, but I, I, I stole the composition um, from one of my colleagues uh, and then kind of found things uh, that I wanted uh, that fascinated me to fill in the space. And so uh, there, there's a focus, this is like this brain orb thing that um, is a power source, is a, uh, you know, a major point of interest in the painting. Um, and so I had to decide like how things came in and out of focus uh, and how I could create mystery both with flat shapes and shapes that got molded and uh, made up of color spots. Uh, so. Um, you know, it was it was an interesting process to find to create a space that I could also then allow figures to live inside of, uh, to unify a weird, um, you know, a weirdly lit painting uh, and to find um, subterranean colors. Okay, the uh, the other painting I'm going to talk about a little bit is uh, the painting uh, titled "Hurry" or the green painting, and uh, that. Uh, that painting started uh, after um, a seminar class trip uh, to the intramural fields uh, at night here at Indiana University. And uh, it was you know, this cool experience where you have this bright neon green turf that people are running over and creating lots of uh, action motions um, on top of. And then you have uh, the, the campus buildings in the background that were kind of uh, warmly but faintly lit. And uh, I, I didn't really think about it at the time, but when I started composing this painting, 
um, kind of in the spirit of Hans Hoffman uh, pushing and pulling colors around, um, that I was just kind of channeling that observational painting that I had done uh, done uh, right before doing that. So um, it was really kind of fascinating that I noticed that uh, later I, I there's, a, there's this pillar in the painting, uh, and I you know I needed something solid for the eye to kind of land on, and I started to I rolled up a piece of paper uh, and used an LED light in my studio and, just, and painted that from observation into the painting. So set up a scenario around uh, this observed moment that would fit into my um, imaginary world and uh, you know, to, to, to give it some solid ground. Um, one of the people visiting my show uh, made a statement about you know, uh, motion is kind of like relative. You don't, if something's moving really fast and everything else is moving really fast around it, uh, you, you know, you, you, you almost like you don't know. Like we're, you know, we're on planet Earth, traveling who knows how fast through outer space, but we don't, we don't really know it. We don't see it. Um, and so in this painting, um, you know, between that pillar and the figure uh, and, and the background, um, there's different. There's a different sense of speed uh, depending on where you are. And um, and so I, I just get a real sense of satisfaction uh, out of allowing um, paint to exist as energy. Um, with tentative and solid marks. So, um, rhizome looking out. Uh, so, rhizome is this um, you know, philosophical term that talks about kind of like the under, the, the invisible structure uh, that things are a part of that has multiple uh, entry and exit points. Um, and so, part of me want through painting wants to make something that is invisible visible and. Uh, so I, I started that from observation um, while at a friend's house, you know, just one observational session to get uh, the background in, to just get this, the placing of, of houses, and then took uh, the, the color information that was on my palette uh, and continued to build with it. You know, if you take a, a spot of color and stretch it out, you know, something that is a, a stone or a piece of house siding, uh, can be stretched out to be a beam, to be an arch, and um, you know that that space where your the point of view is from. To me, that's like inside of the rhizome. That's inside of this uh, this space of kind of primordial uh, painting essence, where uh, things can quickly change from one to another. And there's this other world out there that that you're bridging while painting that is uh, a recognizable world. Um, but it, it all exists inside of space. You can never really escape that in a painting. The Dark Matter Machine. Uh, that painting um, started from just being inspired by a, a heater and a lamp on the floor uh, and just kind of like the, the color moment that I wished I had the time to paint in the moment that I saw it but was you know busy going to class and uh, I, I later set that up, um, you know, took my color information from the setup and, uh, you know, to go with the theme of my show, this invention, um, I, you know, I found a website uh, from China that, uh, you know, you can, you can buy, you know, all these different kinds of uh, machinery, you know, from this place that is alive with industry. Uh, and so the, the machines that are um, in my painting are modeled after uh, you know, uh, a machine that makes irrigation uh, piping. You know, like, there's like tape that goes on irrigation piping, and this machine makes it. Uh, so I, I thought it was like just kind of like an intriguing-looking machine, and so I did a drawing of it, um, and then I I took that observed color palette uh, and started to build those machines um, that you know were in my mind because of the drawing. Uh, and then kind of recreated them. Uh, and so I, I thought it would be, um, you know, these machines are, they make dark matter. Uh, and in a painting, you can have dark optical mixing. And I thought that was kind of like a very, you know, shady thing that blacks can disappear into each other. An important thing for me to do uh, with this work um, was to try something that, uh, that was unsafe, that didn't feel Sure, but I think that kind of comes with the territory of trying to invent something you don't uh, you don't know 
what you're going to end up with when you first start sticking filaments between uh, two wires.